So for example, when we spoke about Imran Hussein and we criticized him for not knowing Arabic, people automatically turn around and say, Yo, you're racist. You want all the Arabs to be, no, no, we don't want only Arabs. We want Arabic speaking individuals. As you should know already, the scholars say that whoever learns Arabic and speaks Arabic fluently is technically an Arab. Is technically an Arab because knowing the Arabic language is more important than having an Arab lineage. So if you speak Arabic, then you have those uh, advantages that the non-speaking Arabic have. Mind you, this is versus, versus saying being an Arab is an advantage versus a non-Arab because that's a whole other discussion. But that's the point that I'm trying to focus on. So for example, when we spoke about Imran Hussein and we criticized him for not knowing Arabic, people automatically turn around and say, Yo, you're racist. You want all the Arabs to be, no, no, we don't want only Arabs. We want Arabic speaking individuals. Inshallah, they're British, they're Chinese, they're Japanese, they're Batikhis, they're Mamamis. It doesn't matter what it is. If you speak Arabic, then Ahlan wa Sahlan, you have now, you have a, a, a pillar upon which you can understand Islam differently than those who don't know Arabic. This is why I repeat and reiterate, any person giving da'wah, any person giving da'wah in the world, if they lack the Arabic language, then you have a fundamental problem in learning Islam from them. Because those individuals, in spite of their skills, which they may have plenty of, they lack a crucial element in learning Islam from the source. And they are forced to rely on translations. And the translations have embedded within them the position of the translator. His vocabulary, his religious stances, his creedal uh, positions, all of these are part of what he translates. So that's why when you read the book of Tafsir, you'll see that if a, if a person whose aqidah is Ash'ari or, or Jahmi, he's, and the, the ayah says, بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَتَانِ or مَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيْهِ He will mistranslate the ayah which mentions the hands of Allah and say something else. He will say something else. He will say the power, the qudra, the ability. Why? Because the translator is inserting into the translation his predisposed positions on the subject. So if you're a da'i who's forced to read translated content, you will never get to the bottom of the situation. So someone like Imran Hussein cannot be taken seriously just from that standpoint. Double down with, double down, he doubles down with now, not only not knowing the Arabic language, but also trying to give you interpretations of a hadith that are only in Arabic in a way that no scholar has given. How in the world do you even combine those two? Where first you don't know the Arabic language and now you're going to give us tafsir of ayat and to the point that he claims that there are mistakes in the Quran. That certain ayat are wrong because he is ignorant of the Arabic language and the Arabic grammar? I mean, come on. And the list goes on. Zakir Naik and I don't know who and I don't know what. Those brothers may be doing great work in certain areas. They don't know the Arabic language. You have to think twice about learning Islam from them. You might benefit from some of their skills, but you cannot take them as teachers per se who can actually teach you the deen of Islam with its fundamental principles and foundations. That is restricted to Arabic-speaking people of knowledge. Arabic-speaking, not Arabs. Some non-Arabs are superior to Arabs by a million years in their language skills. No doubt. If they've learned it, ahlan wa sahlan. If you haven't learned it, then you need, you need to take a chill pill before you have a YouTube channel and start covering books and doing whatever you're doing. And I don't want to mention other names, but you know who I'm referring to. Or you should. Or maybe you don't. Al-Muhim.